It's interesting, the diagnosis of somebody with Parkinson's today would be somewhat similar to somebody in Margaret's situation in the 1950s because we don't have an objective measure like a blood test or an imaging scan to base the diagnosis on. But the treatment is something that has significantly changed. In Margaret's time, medication wasn't even available. Currently, there are five therapies that are in clinical trial testing that are are being evaluated for their potential to slow or stop progression of disease. Surgeries have evolved significantly. Someone with Parkinson's would probably undergo something called deep brain stimulation electrodes or wires are implanted into the brain and electrical stimulation is delivered through those. Those can really markedly lessen symptoms and improve quality of life and lessen the medications that are necessary. Exercise really still is a cornerstone of management for Parkinson's disease. It really helps with not only the management of the motor side of the uh, disease, there is also early indication that this can help with slowing the progression of disease. The symptoms of Parkinson's disease vary very much from person to person, and that's why it's so important for patients to be involved directly in research, and we've gotten patients involved through technology. For example, patients can log their data in a smartphone app or wear a watch and track what their tremor is like. These devices are giving us much more information on what the experience on a 24-7 basis is like. You've had Parkinson's for 20 years. Yeah. The damage to your brain has not affected your mental capacity at all. It hasn't. Oh, God. It's not uncommon for people to be shy about sharing their story. There is still some stigma and misconception associated with the disease, especially when you're younger. And so I think it's very important for people when they're ready to share their story if they're willing to. 